1915. Revolution engulfs Mexico. And caught in the crossfire is the family of Sister Mary Sevilla. When my dad was nine years old, he and his entire family were kidnapped by Pancho Villa, who was one of the revolutionaries at the time of the Mexican Revolution. Pancho Villa kidnaps Mary's grandfather, Manuel Sevilla, because he is an artist and engraver. Villa wants Manuel to do the portraits for the new currency. But Manuel manages to escape Villa's guards. Along with thousands of other refugees, the Sevilla family crosses the border into the United States and starts a new life in California. The drama of her family's journey to the United States inspired Mary to explore her ancestry. At the Family History Center in Lakewood, California, she has scoured hundreds of microfilms to find Mexican church records of the Sevilla line. I built, starting with my dad, I went on back to 1731 with one line and 1780-something with another line. But in all her searching, one person has eluded her. Her grandmother, Rita. Rita died before the revolution. She left behind Manuel and six children who barely knew her. But those children kept her memory alive by passing along her name. Argue, argue. <laughs> Finally, Dad stopped the car. This is Dorothy Rita. And next to her is Lynn Rita. And sitting right next to me, Rita, and I am Mary Rita, <laughs> and none of these cousins knew that three of us had that for a middle name until I called them two weeks ago. Well, I always was told that our grandma came from Nice, France. No. <laughs> grandpa came from Seville, Spain. That's what I always heard. Neither is correct. <laughs> well. <laughs> For family historians, the female line is often hard to document. Mary's search for her grandmother begins with a church record of the wedding of Manuel and Rita. When I was growing up, I always heard that my grandmother was Rita Trezeru. And I'm looking at it thinking, someplace I'm going to find Trezeru in this document, but it's not here any place. Instead, Rita's maiden name is listed as Sanchez, a name Mary has never heard before. Who is Rita's real father? Unless Mary can find out, that part of her family line will remain hidden. To uncover Rita's past, Mary travels to Mexico. Her first stop is the civil registry, where birth and death records for Mexico City have been kept since 1859. Mary knows that Grandma Rita had a child named Gloria, who died as an infant. This record should list Rita's maiden name. The document says the baby's father was Manuel Sevilla, the mother, Rita Trezeru. But to prove that Rita's father was Trezeru, Mary must find her baptism record. wedding document said Rita was baptized here at Santa Vera Cruz Church in downtown Mexico City. <laughs> Buenos dias. Me llamo Mary Sevilla. Mary hopes to find Rita's record somewhere in these archives, which date back to the Spanish conquest. All across the world, Catholic churches are a tremendous repository of family history through baptism books like these, which even today are kept handwritten. Mary thinks Rita was born in 1873 and would have been baptized within six months of her birth. Without an exact date, hundreds of records must be examined carefully for the names Trezeru, Sanchez, or simply Rita. The day wears on. So far, nothing. The baptism books separate legitimate from illegitimate children. Could Rita be here? Finally, a breakthrough. A baptism record of an illegitimate child named Maria Rita. But the last name is not Trezeru, 
not even Sanchez, but Galvez. Oh, wow. This has to be her. I've heard for a long time that Rita Amelia's mother was named Jesus Danielle. But this is a big surprise, this Antonio Galvez. I would suspect that Rita was born to a mother out of wedlock, and possibly it was not okay to be pregnant and unmarried, and so that she went to live with her aunt. The aunt was married to a man named Tresoru. I'm assuming since she was raised in the Tresoru household that they just, it was easier to say Tresoru that it was their child. When the mother did get married, that's when I think she probably married someone named Sanchez. After years of searching, Mary believes she may have found at last the answers to her grandmother's identity. For me, it's just the excitement of looking and then finding them on a record. They really existed. They have their place in history. It feels good, really good. 